I, I learned every day from Dean. <laughs> Dean recruited me when he was a college coach. Oh, so we go back, I don't know, 20 some years. So yeah, Dean's been uh, pretty instrumental, not just today, but in the past for me. What was he like as a recruiter? Well, I always tell him, I was like, Dean, you should have gave the cash out. He didn't give the cash, so I didn't go. <laughs> so at the end of the day, I put it on Dean. But no, he was uh, just like you hear him up here, man. He's uh, thought out, smart, you know. So it was, uh, it's kind of funny now, 20 years later, we're back together. So. Well, Louisville, <laughs> gave the cash out. <laughs> no well, doubt. Go um, Coach Dave, how, uh, how's everything been with the installation? And, uh, you know, we're waiting to see Kyle Pitts and the rest of the offense uh, here. How, how yeah, so. It's been good so far in terms of, you know, we had obviously goals going into training camp, uh, no different than the spring of first year together as an offense, putting things together, uh, getting guys to understand the way we want to practice, play, our terminology. So there's a lot of things that go into being a first year offense. Uh, I've been through this a few times uh, in terms of going through this. And again, each day the goal is to get better to get more comfortable. And I think the guys that we've asked uh, who are part of this program right now have done that. So we're, we're excited where everybody's at. And uh, Matt Ryan having him as a, you know, your main piece there, uh, how's that been? And uh, where's he at in training camp as we uh, you know, move into the last game? Yeah, I mean, you guys obviously have been you know, exposed to Matt and how Matt operates. And for me, you know, I've always seen him from afar. I know a number of coaches who've coached him. I know a number of players who've been his teammate. Uh, now being with him here in this setting, uh, he's as advertised, professional, cares, smart, works extremely hard, wants to be the example. And so for us as coaches, when you have a player like that who's established within your, within your culture that you can coach, uh, he wants to be good, he wants to be coached, everybody else kind of falls in line from there. So he's, he's been awesome. And last one for me, Coach. Um, where are you all at with the uh, – Line, construction of the offensive line and how comfortable are you all heading into this last game and with uh, two more weeks to get to the uh, opener? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, right now, I'm sure as Coach Smith has, has said over and over to you guys, competition. And what we've seen is a group, not just the five that we put out there for the first five, but we've seen a group of offensive linemen go and push each other. And you've got guys along the offensive line, similar to Matt Ryan, who want to work. Uh, they want to be the example. And you've got guys who want to compete. So for us, moving forward with the offensive line, you know, rarely do you go through a regular season where you're not going to have multiple O-line uh, lineups. And so we know that. So at the end of the day, what may start week one potentially not, might not be at the end of the year just because of whatever issues that come up. So our goal is to make sure guys compete, which they're doing, but also to build depth. And I think we're seeing that through the preseason, which has been great about playing these guys in the preseason, especially the first two games. You get guys out there, uh, they may start. They may never have started before. Um, and they go out there, and they get to go against competition. We get to evaluate. So all that's been a, a plus for us as coaches. Michael. Dave, with Arthur being the play caller, I think a lot of people you know, equate OC to sure. calling plays. Can you explain exactly what your maybe role is and, and how what yeah. maybe you do that's traditional to an OC versus maybe not? Right. I think the way this is constructed, um, so obviously familiar for myself to do this because that was my time in Chicago as the head coach was the play caller. Um, and so my job more than anything else is really to help set the table. So during the week from an install standpoint, speaking in front of the offensive players, helping design the game plan um, with obviously his collaboration, right? Making sure that he's comfortable with what's on that sheet and then doing all the coordination parts of the practice, the scripting, helping with those things. So. You know, he has a dual mandate, right? He's the play caller, but he also is the head coach. So he needs to be, in, and he's done this a great job, has been a head coach of the whole team, um, which I think is tough when you're, when you're the play caller, um, is the defense feeling you. And you can see it every day in his team meetings. You can see it in the practice field. I mean, he is a head coach of the whole team. And it's my job to make sure the transition from him when he's calling the plays is smooth. And then the things that he doesn't need to worry about are the things that myself and the staff, offensive staff, can take off his plate. So at the end of the day, it's to make his life essentially easy as a play caller in terms of the in and outs of the daily activities, which is my job to do that. 
the fact that you had to do it that you did last year. Yeah, so the last like couple years, the way it was constructed. Help. Absolutely. And does Arthur, you know, kind of ask questions of you saying, hey, what was that like? And no. like yeah, it's a great question. I mean, as you guys know, you know, Coach is his own man in terms of how he goes about things. But what helps me is I've been through the experience of being in the head coach's office in, in my previous life in Chicago and seeing what comes across his desk. And there's a lot of things that really don't really pertain to football sometimes that come across the head coach's desk. And so I know some of his time's taken away from that. So again, it's my job as well as the offensive staffs to kind of fill that void so that he feels ready to be, uh, to go out here and call practice and call the games. So it's, it's basically all the stuff that's kind of under the hood to help him out in that transition. Sure. Yeah, I think first and foremost, uh, especially with Coach Smith, my relationship goes back previous, obviously, to this existence here in Atlanta. So I think I have a pretty good feel of, of what he expects and how his mind works to a certain degree. So the other thing is, especially with the assistant coaches, the one thing that you know we make sure that we go through is there's no egos involved. So regardless of what your title might state, it does not mean that you can or cannot say something. So when we're out there, right, we obviously we all respect each other's opinion. And again, when it comes to certain situations or players, right, just having a feel out there that, you know, certain guys are going to talk about certain points to certain players and respect it and, uh, and move on from there. I guess this is the first time that we've actually had a chance to talk to you about now that you're on the same field as Calvin Ridley. And we were talking to him the other day, and he was talking about routes being an art, not necessarily a science. I mean, when you look at what he does out on the field, yeah, yeah. I think that's a, that's a good way to put it for Red, as well as there's things I'll tell the quarterback, be, a, be an artist, not a blacksmith. I mean, sometimes out there, the way the lines are drawn on a piece of paper, look, I mean, that's more of a teaching tool. Sometimes when real life happens, right, you have to be able to see the big picture. And I think, you know, it's interesting being with Calvin's brother in Chicago and now being with Calvin and always seeing him from afar and playing against him, you know, seeing him up close and personal, you know, I, what I really respect about is the way he approaches it. I, I get his natural talent, and I get his ability. I think anybody can really see that. But being a chance to be in the meeting with him, seeing how engaged he is, seeing how he, he loves feedback, loves to, you know, be coached. I mean, I think until you're in a room with somebody like that, you don't obviously have that feel. But that, to me, goes further at times than what you kind of see on the field because it's all that stuff that leads up to what happens on the field. And, and Ritt has done a really good job with that. Oh, I thought time this question came up. <laughs> My goodness, I thought that's what D-Lo was going to lead with, man. Golly. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I was trying to run at the flagpole. I think the flagpole's about six inches tall, so it didn't go very far. But, I mean, I'm looking around going, I mean, put me in, coach. I mean, I know the system. I know the offense. I don't know if I can take a hit or take a snap, but that's not important. I mean, how about that, right? I said it's a Disney movie in the making right now. Are you kidding me? Now, the performance might be a horror story, but it would be fantastic just to go through it. Seriously, though, um, from a quarterback perspective, Minette's obviously been in multiple systems, head coaches, OCs. How difficult is that in the first year to change gears and go to something Yeah, I mean, again, where I, where I go with him is how he's approached the very first – conversation we've had the very first time we were in person the very first time I was able to coach him on the field or in a meeting room Matt as professional as they come so he looked at the what we were doing and went all in bought in and what we've asked of him um, it does not mean that I might not come to Matt and say hey I know you've done this in your past what are some of the coaching points that have helped you on this and so there is a little bit of that collaboration that goes forward but again I I can't reiterate this enough, and I'm sure you guys have felt this talking to him all the time. Um, in terms of coaching him, I mean, he's exactly what you want in a franchise quarterback. He is professional. He knows his stuff inside and out, and he wants to be coached. And I think that's, that's all we can ask for. Beyond that, is there anything that you've seen? There's no nice way to ask this question. Is there anything that you've seen that you've 
there anything that you've seen in him that says he's still got it, he can still do it, he can still be a productive Yeah, I mean, again, when we, uh, the example I always give is, and I think I said this in my introductory press conference, the very first thing I did when I got this job was I went back to our scouting report from last year when the Bears were playing the Falcons and reading exactly what we thought, not just as coaches, but as personnel of, of the players that were going to be here. You know, and again, obviously, you know, when you take a job with Matt Ryan and, and what he's done and you see what was written, which is private, but you see him in the practice field and how he approaches things, again, obviously, you know, Matt's our guy and we're going in with him. And again, there's nothing there in the practice field that would make you think that he can't make the throws that he's making. And he's done a good job of accepting the coaching and moving forward. No doubt. Goal number one was to get Matt a two tenths faster from his 5840 that he probably currently <laughs> runs. But he's done it. Look, he's bought all in. So he's trying to get faster. He's working on it. He's in great shape. I think uh, people will be shocked by uh, his ability to, his quick twitch ability when he takes off from the pocket. Keep it, going. You Keep it rolling, man. Keep it rolling. Can he beat you in a race? Oh, good. And no doubt. <laughs> I don't know if I could beat. My, my 12-year-old would beat me in a race or my 5-year-old. Uh, it, it's, it's obvious why so much attention is paid to, to uh, Kyle Pitts, but to have Hayden Hurst in that yep. position group as well, what have you seen from him and what kind of uh, options does it um, allow for, for, the, uh, for the play callers and play uh, designers to have sure. Hayden and Kyle? Yeah, I mean, again, from an offensive perspective, you like to put on the field as many different playmakers as possible that the defense has to account for, right? From Little League, Pee Wee, all the way through the NFL, right? You want to be able to defense to have to account for multiple guys in the, in the way you use them. And Hayden, again, there's a reason why, you know, when he's out there, the effort he gives, I, as coaching myself and other coaches, we appreciate the way that all these guys practice, especially Hayden. Hayden plays, has done a great job playing fast. He's very coachable, um, and he wants to be part of what we're doing, and, he, and he's all in on that, which is great. There's, uh, there's a lot of guys on this staff that, that have Tennessee Titans roots, you know, Charles and Frank and you. Um, when you guys were all you know, uh, together, like, what was that experience like? You know, sure. And, and now you're here 10 years later. Yeah, the first year we were together was a lockout year. So anybody who was part of that, I mean, your very first year, the offseason, there wasn't any offseason. You know, we had – there was – scouts that had to do painting in the stadium just to keep their jobs. I mean, it was a crazy year. Um, we didn't get the players until training camp started. Um, so there was a lot of time for us as coaches. And I was, a, I, think, I think, a 30-year-old kid when I first got that job as a receiver coach. And, you know, I didn't know what to expect. I'd only been a player in the NFL. I'd never been a coach. And I was fortunate enough to get that spot. And there was so much time in the offseason. It was just you gravitated towards certain coaches and you know, there was a group of us that, that were really close. And even when we left Tennessee, we all went our different ways besides, besides coach, but we all kept pretty close contact, uh, especially Coach Smith and myself. Is that a little bit uncomfortable when you're a coach? Now, I mean, I'm getting yeah, look, I, what was happening. Yeah, <laughs> look, it's in front of, in front of, uh, <laughs> that's right. Um, no, again, yeah. It, there's other names I have for them, they're just not appropriate. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. I can't wait to see what uh, miles per hour is tracked. Put that on the Mercedes-Benz scoreboard right there for us. Huh?